Well, mm. I, I, I got that from the AUT Chaplain. Time travels age of dinosaur boxes. Yeah. What are they supposed to mean anyway? It's not supposed to mean anything. Like a bit of a, what, is this like a bootleg version of a... I don't know. Magic school bus? Little Einstein? Little Einstein? Probably like a bootleg version of Little Einstein. <laughs> Speaking of Little Einsteins, welcome back to the As Yet Undecided podcast with your... Little Einsteins. Little Einsteins. No, big Einsteins now. <laughs> especially when it comes to Mike. Uh, I, I Mike is a very big Einstein. Well, I was going to say, with your relative hosts. Relatively cool? No, just relative. Relative hosts. Yeah. Relatively undecided hosts. Mike and Sophie. Yeah. Okay, so hey, how come Google Drive isn't working? I usually be able to I usually be able to get to the um offline version of Google Drive. Oh. Sophie's having problems. Yes. Hopefully it's not emotional problems. Oh, there we go. I'm getting onto the uh let's see. AET debating society. I'm sorry, I need to get to the uh uh, podcast plans. Plans for next podcast. I got the offline... There we go. Now, I was listening through the old podcasts, and I realised that we forgot to give an update for a particular case we were talking about. <laughs> okay. Eminem and National. Okay. It was decided back in October yes. in the High Court. Yes. And National lost. Eminem yeah. is to get $600,000 plus interest. Yes, and um, what... What he was planning to do with that six hundred thousand dollars plus interest? Well, no, not him. He's not going to get it actually. No, no, but what he was going to do with it? Yes. Was he was going to donate it? To. To the um, Puerto Rico effort, hurricane relief effort. If he could get the money, they're currently in um, appeals right at this moment. That's right. Um, I was. I thought he was going to donate donate it to the artist of Planet Key. No. As a further screw you. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the, Why not? That'll be funny, but no. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it's, it's like Eminem doesn't need the money, so he just give it, gives it to people that need it the most. Not the artist? No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, as it turns out, I have one more pretentious food for you to go. I bought it a few weeks ago, but we never got around to it. Okay. But luckily, it's... Crackers, so they tend to last for a very long time. Crackers? Yep. But not your ordinary cracker. I'm a bit scared around about now. This cracker is too good for Polly. Uh, Bonnie's oat cakes. Made with calm high, honey. Calm high. Because you see it's got the long, you see it's got the a line over the A? <laughs> Kamaha, honey. Okay. Kamahi. Kamahi. <laughs> okay. No, I'm being silly. Sorry, guys. Um, so the other day, they were complaining on um, RNZ National that, um, no, the some of the biggest listeners of RNZ <clears throat> National were complaining that there were too much Māori in it this broadcasting now. Considering, considering that Māori is the second language of New Zealand, I don't see what their problem is. Yeah. You know. Oh well. We're always going to have dicks in this world. Racist. Spigots. Yeah. So. Tell me how this goes. These are, this is an oat cake. Okay. Which is wheat free, dairy free, refined sugar free. But it's not organic. It is, however, made with New Zealand whole grain oats, high Olex sunflower oil, West Coast Kamaha honey, Marlborough sea salt, raising agent, sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda. Main contain traces of tree nuts. Okay, that's fine. Okay, it is it is square, or or, or a rectangle. Mm. It's crumbly. Slightly sweeter. Mm-hmm. It's good. I would want some cheese on it. But, you know, Mike, do you have cheese? No. 
Oh, you're too poor. Sorry. Well, I had cheese. It's gone. Don't worry about it. It's good. Yeah. This technically fails my cracker test. Fails your what test? Cracker test. Not quite a cracker. It's a cracker adjacent. Yeah. Besides, I'm not too sure why I even call it a cracker. They don't call themselves crackers. It's an oat cake. Yeah. As an oat cake, it's fun. Yeah. It's, they call themselves oat cakes. I never, I'm not too sure why they call them... I, I'm not too sure why I said cracker. Probably because it reminded me of a cracker, but it's not quite a cracker. Yeah. Therefore, it never sought to pass the cracker test in the first place. So, it's an oat cake. Does it pass oat cake criteria? It does. Do you like it? It, it's about exactly what I expect from Potentious Food Corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you have that again? With other, uh, with other condiments? Cheese? Yes. Yeah. I would pair that off with a good brie. With a good brie? Yeah. Okay. Not sweet treat, sweet dreams are made of cheese. <laughs> Who am I to disagree? <laughs> okay. How, how, how has the week been, Sophie? Yeah, it's been good. How's your week been? It's been okay. Yeah. And um, I gave everyone their Christmas presents early. I have no idea why. Um, you know, Mike, Josie, Ray's, my friends. The yes. three musketeers. Musketeers? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it seems as if you all approved. Yes, considering that I almost cried. This is the really depressing thing now. Yeah. I would never be able to top that pre present easily without spending a hundred dollars. <laughs> because there are a few things that Mike does want in life that are super expensive. I've had a look. No. No, it's a solid I don't. Note. I can't afford... Until I get a job... As a law firm, I won't be able to afford them. I'm very sorry, Mike. So from now on, your presence will be um, always going to be less. You're never going to have that same high feeling from that present ever again because it's... I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'll, it's just that that context... It's just that you were really lucky with that because you told me that story and I just happened to have found that gift yeah. at a reasonable price. Now, I'm not sure what positives I can take out of this. What? That even if you do get a job at a law firm, we would still be friends. Of course. Yeah. That's the part that always surprises me the most, because some people change jobs and change locales. Yeah. And, and some people not become friends anymore. Yeah, because they can't keep in contact anymore. Yeah. So long as you say, Auckland will still be friends. Yay! However, if you decide to move over to Hamilton, then things will get a little more difficult. Yeah. So you won't, right? Mm. That means I don't have to drive. Yeah. Or me. Yeah. Now, how is the driving skills going? Yeah, it's going alright. Hey, um... Purple... You know how you like purple things, right? Of course. I always love purple things. There's the one thing that I might give you as a your next gift. Mm. Except it's... They don't have it in purple. No, it's okay. It's okay. They have it in pink. They have it oh. in black. They have it in green. They have it in red. So, if I can't get you a purple thing, what colour can I get you? Black will be fine. Black will be fine? Okay. Because, you know, black, men, manly. No, oh, well, we want to really go there. But, like, like I prefer, like, in regards to black, mm -hmm. or, or any sort of colour, really. Yeah? I prefer a, the matte version rather than the gloss version. So, if you have a car, you'll get a matte black car. Yeah, rather than glossy black. Mm-hmm. Actually, um, you know how you said you're a bit scared of pretentious food corner because of what I gave you last time with the ed edible packaging? <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. I'd like to discuss that a little bit further, please. Okay. Because I think edible packaging is a bit of an interesting concept. Because I think that might be the thing that helps save the environment. Um, you know how much of a monumental mess this plastic packaging is that that's cover currently covering this oat cake? A lot. Yeah. I mean, you have your oil, you have your transportation, and it's just a huge, and it's like a plastic that won't degrade over millions of years, and of course we also have this thing called the Great Pacific Garbage, garbage Patch, which is like a few million tons of garbage just swirling around in this 
particular patch in the Pacific. It's basically a gigantic island. And here, and here in New Zealand, we also have to be very careful too because the wildlife loves eating garbage, eating yes. rubbish, because they think it's like some sort of. Because honestly, um, a plastic, a plastic bag it looks a lot like a jellyfish to a turtle. Yes. So they eat the plastic and they choke. Yeah. Now, now I, I would like to know mm. what. You, you, you know, let's take the edible packaging back a bit. Mm-hmm. What would happen if they ate a biodegradable piece of something? So instead of um, a polystyrene popcorn, they ate a starch popcorn. Yeah. Who, um, which animal are you talking about? Well, well, well you, you, you know, any sort of effects to any sort of living living being. Well, eating a starch popcorn, eating a starch popcorn from like the Kavita pack I tried to get you to eat. It'd just be the same as eating bread. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like I, I would prefer either or as an option mm. rather than plastic. Mm. So, so both of them would be would be sufficient. Um, starch popcorn. No, well, 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 any sort of, you know, starch um, equivalent for like packaging. Yeah. Because you, you know we always go straight to the most approved in our mind option yeah rather than trying to find a more affordable option what do you mean so like 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 for instance yeah we we might actually go on to this debate now yes the plastic bag debate yeah um, we'll go back to edible packaging later. Maybe no, 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 but, but, but it, it's a, it's the same premise. Oh, I see. Um, well, with with um, countdown in New World. Yes. Oh, that's rare. Yeah. Yeah. They are phasing out plastic bags by the end of twenty eighteen. I'm just saying it's rare because they hardly ever work together. Correct. Yeah. So whenever you say with countdown and New World, it's like, oh, that's unusual. Yeah. So. The part that always got me is that they are completely cancelling out plastic bags. Plastic bags. They are not coming up with an alternative. They already did. No, but the problem is, like I said before, yeah, it is far too expensive. Reusable bags. Yeah, because like you would pay like two dollars per bag. That is far too expensive for the normal consumer. Unless you reuse those bags. Yeah, so, like, instance, you know, have a cheaper biodegradable bag. Yeah. Or a eatable bag. Yeah. They're at a low price point. Usually when they mean by eat, usually um, when you say eat edible bag, they also mean biodegradable too, because if you can eat it and degrade it within 24 hours in your stomach, the environment can do the same easily. Yeah, yeah but... But the whole fact that about at the price point yeah. would be a little bit more difficult. There is always there is already a precedent that consumers will be willing to pay yeah. ten cents per bag. That's tw- wait, reuse how much is how much is a reusable bag? You know the, they they switch between about two dollars per bag. Reusable ones. Well, 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 I'm talking about the cloth ones there. Cloth ones, that's two dollars, and if you can reuse them, and they're two dollars, and it's ten cent, and other or you can use ten cent per bag. Mike, you would easily use twenty plastic bags within a month. Within a month, the the cloth bags will just pay themselves. No, but people are lazy. Well. <laughs> that's oh the, that, man, that's the, really? That, that's my debate right there. People are that lazy, too yeah. lazy to forget about the cloth bag. No, I, I mean honestly, if if the bags ten cent for plastic bags is too much, if there is going to be like a two dollar cloth bag. Yeah, yeah, but but like you know, if it was a ten cent, yeah, biodegradable bag, yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, that might be fine. But the whole fact is, um, you know, rather than completely cutting off plastic. Why don't you go for a better plastic made of corn? No, but yeah, well, or, or, yeah, like a biodegradable bag, mm. and charge ten cents. I'm pretty sure the consumer would be fine with that. 
but I don't think that the technology is there or the cost is there mm. to bring it down to 10 cents a bag. You mean biodegradable bag is still super expensive? Yeah, I, I, I think it is currently too expensive. Mm. Or else they would have brought it in. Yeah. Now nah, I'm fine with cloth bags. Because that'll mean that we would have to... Because the consumer is lazy, mm. they'd rather have the bags there rather than having a bring their bag full of their own bags into the supermarket. Bunnings has an interesting solution for that. They, you know how their stuff comes in boxes, right? Yes. Well, afterwards they stack their boxes near the near the checkout. And they allow their customers to grab the boxes to grab put their stuff in. Yeah, well, yeah, there is that. Yeah. I've seen that done in a few other shops. But you don't think that there'll be enough cardboard boxes to go around, would there? Surprisingly, there's always enough cardboard boxes. Well, you, you, but for everyone else, like, like, buildings would be fine, but if you're talking about a supermarket, generally mm. the cardboard boxes are gone very freaking fast. Okay. Yeah. How about several sources? We can have, have cardboard boxes, biodegradable bags, cloth bags. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. As as long, because the consumer is lazy, mm. they would go for the cardboard boxes first because it is free. Mm. Then they would go for the biodegradable bags because mm. they always would go for the cheapest option first. Yeah. If the consumer, hey, if the consumer really is that lazy, is that why the, the shopping, the, the delivery, the shopping delivery is so popular? Well, yeah. Very much so. And especially, I like the way that they're doing it now. Yeah. Well, instead of charging a, a rate per delivery, you charge a flat rate over a period, like a subscription. Yeah, okay. So, like, when, when Amazon gets to New Zealand, they'll be charging very much, very similar. Mighty Ape's currently doing that at the moment. Mm. I think it's $14 per three months for unlimited delivery. Oh, you mean Amazon Prime, right? Well, yeah, yeah but, you know, when that comes to New Zealand, they, when that comes offer, to New Zealand, they yeah. would offer that sort of package. When, they, when you mean by when it comes to New Zealand, it means when they establish in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand with a population of 4.5 billion, no, 4.5 million people, no. I said billion by mistake, that will be a horrendous nightmare, 4.5 million people, it's not big enough to have an Amazon warehouse. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Oh man, this whole subject kind of reminds me of Stardew Valley. <coughs> oh, by the way, I bought my own copy of Stardew Valley, so feel free to play it without um, cutting me out. So. Okay. Uh, with that being said, let's go back to... Um, plastic bags. So you think that there should be biodegradable bags instead, but because it's so damn expensive, they, they can't? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that'll mean that that the supermarkets would have to subsidise using those bags. And I don't think that the, super, that, that the supermarkets will be able to, to subsidise it that much. No. So, okay. So, Hey, uh, Mike, this is just a side note. Um, where's the pharmacy with the best deals for students? Because Dad's to told me to go to the pharmacy to buy some medicine to flam. Wait, did I bring enough money for that? Yeah, oh, my, oh yeah, I bought my card, so. Um, Dad will pay me back later. Actually, no, I'm just telling you now so you can think about it later. So you can think, think about it for later. But, okay, that's okay, fine. Okay, back to the. No, just received a text from Dad. This fibbit's good for Dad. Yep. Yeah. So, um, right. Any other solutions? Um, so you had the cardboard boxes, you had the cloth bags. But honestly, though, the, the sooner they phase out plastic bags, the better. This it's causing too much trouble. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, that's the part that are, they just annoyed me with the whole banning thing. They haven't come up with a viable solution. Oh, so they? Do you think they were moving too fast? Yeah. But like me. No. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. It's good. They're yeah. there. They're there. But, um, 
I think their plan could work, but I'm really not too sure. Yeah. Which, go, which of course, leads back to edible packaging. Would you eat your spoon after, after you finish with it? If you say went to like Movenpick and you finish with a cone and your, and your ice cream and... Oh my goodness, the cone is a great example of edible packaging, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I think people don't realise it, but they probably eat more edible packaging than they think they do. So for example, the hot dog bun. That's edible packaging. Sandwich. A uh, sandwich bread. Edible packaging. Ice cream cones. Edible packaging. Now... But how about things like utensils? Now, the, 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 that's a tricky discussion because when would you eat it? Like your ut- utensils and your plate? Yeah, when would you eat it? After you finished your meal. Yeah. It'll be full of sauce. Then it'll become more palatable. Because no doubt they're going to make the plate have to start, like really, really plain starch or something. And it's going to be boring as heck, so. Yeah. But th- that'll make a society where you would eat everything on the fly rather than, like, you, you know, you wouldn't expect to have a, a cupboard full of eatable plates at your home. No, it's not for home, but for things on the fly. So, for example, street food vendors. Yeah, yeah but, you know, that's what I'm meaning. Yes. We, we have to define it more. Okay, so you'll think that those utensils will only be useful in, say, restaurants, fast food restaurants and street food vendors. Yeah, yeah, anything where you are eating outside of your home. Not necessarily. So, for example, with fancy restaurants, they won't have edible packaging because they have, they all have proper plates and knives and forks. But we're talking about places that are currently using plastic knives as well as paper cups and cups yeah. things, yeah. Yeah, but, you, you, you know, you could, you, you know, the reason why I said the way that I said it is that you can use that yeah. in any instance where you're eating outside of home. Picnics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but... So... It, yeah. Would you so in those situations, say you're at a picnic and you've done, would you would you would you like to eat your knife and fork and yeah, plate afterwards? I would. Yeah. Okay. Because there is actually a company in India that's developed this um, starch-based knife and fork. You can basically nibble on afterwards. Yeah. And it's going to have all the good stuff, you know, the goo afterwards. The. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it all packaging has been around for ages. It's just that people don't realise it. Just as people don't realise that unisex toilets. Um, Unisex toilets are more common than um, single gender toilets. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, but yeah, but like 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 we said before. Yeah, it is still at at that unaffo- at, at that unaffordable price point. Unaffordable price point. Okay. Because if the if the restaurant vendor yeah you know won't buy it yeah then. Then we won't know. Then we won't know to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's just one of those. It's just one of those funny ass things that it seems like a really novel and innovative idea until you realise it's always been with us the whole time. Yeah. So um, I'm not. Too, I'm still not too sure why people are so hung up about um, single sex toilets when they probably have one at home. No, I mean no, not hung up. To, I'm not too sure why people are so hung up about um, mixed gender toilets when they probably have one at home. You know. Yeah, because well, it's it's the whole not knowing. Not knowing. It's like who has boy been in the toilet? We well, we have a, a big hang up about who has used that toilet. We care about the genitalia of strangers that much. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Because we don't know who has been in that toilet and what possible diseases that they may have had. What does that have to do with what genitalia the other strangers have? You, you know, like take for instance hepatitis and all the other diseases that they may have. Yeah. The person would go, ugh. But what does that have to do with males and females sharing toilets? But yeah, it, it is that preconceived notion. That's just weird. That if I don't know the person, yeah, who has been in my toilet, yeah, then I just won't go. 
Wait, it's, no, no, no. I'm talking about genders and toilets, Mike. What does genders and toilets have to do with diseases? No, no, no. It is not about the gender. It is about the person. Why? I'm talking. I'm still. Ta I'm talking about hang-ups with genders and toilets, Mike. Not about diseases and toilets. Ah, the diseases bit I can understand, but gender. Why do you care about the gender of the person who just used the toilet? That's well, the weirdest hang-up I've ever had. I've heard so far. It's. It's it, it's more of. The outside toilet experience rather than the toilet experience. Oh, I see. It's like meeting random strangers. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't expect a man to be where you are. You don't, no, you don't, I'm, I'm, he's saying that you don't expect a woman to be where you are. So like, like, yeah. like, like if I, like, say that we don't know each other. Yeah. Right? Right. If you came out of the toilet yeah. and you saw me. Yeah. You would act a little bit scared, wouldn't you think? No. Say that you don't know me. Mike, I know I won't be scared because I've been to some hostels in Germany that have unisex toilets. Yeah. I literally didn't care about who ca who came in and out. Yeah, but you but you are a far more intelligent person. And far more blithe, apparently. I'm yeah. very blithe. So, like, like, take for instance... If I, you know, some people are scared when I hop into an elevator in my hostel. Yeah. Because they assume the worst. Yeah. They're like, ah, no, scary fat monster, the marshmallow man's about to attack me. Yeah, exactly. Because people assume the worst out of people. Yeah, I don't. Whereas I'm like, okay. Yeah. I just hope that that guy was clean. That's it. Honestly, though, this is the only criteria I have for people in public toilets. Just be clean. Just be clean. And flush. And flush. That's part of being clean. Yeah, no. Keep the toilet usable for the next person. Please. Yes. Respect, That's all I ask. Respect others how you would like to be treated. Respect the toilet. Respect the toilet. <laughs> Respect the toilet. <laughs> Quote of the day. But in saying that, on that note, we should end the podcast there. Yes, we shall. Respect your mothers. Respect <laughs> your fathers. Respect the family. And respect and respect your cow. Moo. <laughs> and, and of course, um, if you like to complain on that Mulan reference about how I screwed everything up again, just remember, A, I'm Asian, and B, complain it to the email as you understand the podcast at gmail.com or C, you can complain it onto social media where all the comp all the cesspool of cesspit of complainers all converge but please be creative um at, at ayu podcast at on twitter tumblr and facebook or you can contact us directly at the manus t-h-e-m-a-r-n-u-s or sophie 9709 on all platforms except for instagram because russian sophie has not got back to me yet <laughs> have a have a nice day guys